Hey guys, what is going on out there today? It's Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Just getting logged here and in here by the minute before we're going to start. Uh, Joe, I see that, um, <clears throat> I see you in chat. Um, so you're good. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Give me a thumbs up, everybody, if you can hear me. Um, my connection is very slow today, very slow. Um, but yeah, someone uh, just let me know you can hear me okay. Should be able to. Um, yeah, good. KJ, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, let's get rolling here in just about a minute. Maybe we'll give folks another extra minute to get logged on. And um, hope everyone's having a great day so far, wherever you are. I was out in the grass courts here at Mission Hills Country Club uh, earlier this morning. Second day, the grass has been open uh, here. And it's just, uh, hey, Joe, thank you. Um, it's spectacular what they do every year, month of October, is they shut down the grass, they scalp it, they reseed it, and uh, and it's it's when it comes back the first of November, it is just like it almost looks fake. It's so green, it's so pristine, it's so beautiful, and um, just feel really really fortunate to be able to have those grass courts here, um, guys. Let's uh, what time we got here? We got twelve o'clock. I'm gonna start at twelve o one, and uh, and then we'll get rolling. Um, what else is going on? Um, if you guys are just getting logged on, yeah, I'd love to see in the chat, um, you know, who you are, where you're, where, where you're getting logged in from. Just go ahead and drop that in the chat and let me know. That would be cool. And, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, I had a couple of dogs in the background, so. Uh, we might hear one or two of them. Um, anyway, uh, okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what, I got 12 oh, no, I still at 12 o'clock. Let's wait one more minute, 12 oh, one, we'll get rolling. And uh, there it is, 12 oh, one. All right, I'm gonna start and look. So, guys, thanks for hanging out today. Uh, kind of a short notice put uh, out this morning, just something's been on my mind I wanted to talk about. Um, had a practice session yesterday with one of my regular partners and we talked about this about how to take time away from your opponent when you're serving and um um lynn is mine working i am here cool yeah no i got your i got it um so i wanted to just kind of give you guys a couple of uh i, I want to show you a couple of <coughs> videos excuse me <coughs> I got a little pepper <laughs> in my shake. My beautiful wife, she makes this great shake in the morning. We didn't get it this morning until later. Um, anyway, a little extra pepper in it. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, how do you take time away when you're serving? This is going to be more in singles. I mean, obviously in doubles, we're trying to serve in volley. But in singles, sometimes I think there's a misnomer about serve and stay back. As opposed to serving, uh, as opposed to serving volley, serving volley, you know, clearly that is the uh, the great tactic in terms of trying to take time away from your from your returning partner when you're when you're especially when you're serving out wide. And I'm going to show you examples of both of those today from a couple of matches I played recently this year. Um, and uh, but before we get going, if you are new, oh, well, let me. I got some notes here. Um, so yeah, we're going to work on that. The other thing I've got three, what I'm calling swing technique cues, um, for your serve that I think will give you more natural power. And then how do you actually control that power in terms of placement? We're going to talk about target a little bit. Um, but look, if you're brand new, welcome. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have you on board. If this is your first time, let me give you my 30 second quick bio here. Uh, which is, you know, I've been coaching online since 1999. It's one of the first first guys to go get a domain. I had webtennis.net. I couldn't find webtennis.com because some, someone in South America was cyber squatting on it. It took me a few years to be able to get .com. So I really started the thing with webtennis.net back in the day. 
and eventually it took me about four or five years to get this fellow to uh, get reasonable with the price he was asking. And finally, I was able to buy uh, .com. But I've been doing that since 1999. I've actually been teaching that's my whole career, uh, you know, 50 plus, 50 plus years. Um, and maybe a lot like you, super competitive, love to train, love to play the tournaments. Um, so whether you're playing tournaments or whether you're playing league matches or just super serious practice matches, I think you're really going to enjoy today's um, What's the Right Shot live episode number number 308. Over my career, 19 USA national goal balls in both singles and doubles, actually eight in the last 12 months, which has all been something new for me, just a bunch of mindset training. I do have a course on that. If you're interested, um, I can point you in that direction. So yeah, 19 goal balls in the last, uh, I mean, in the in the career, four USA World Cup teams. Uh, the most recent one, we got the silver in Mallorca, Spain, literally about two to two or three weeks ago. Uh, also won the doubles there, so have now got a world doubles title. Current rankings in the U.S., uh, number one in my age group in both singles and doubles, USTA and the ITF world ranking. Number one in doubles. It's all points, but still, you know, what the heck. And then number three uh, in singles. And then, and look, at the end of today, if you haven't already done so, and this is, again, for you new guys who, 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 who might just be getting introduced to me, um, I've got a free video that it's a video course. It's about, th nah, initially it was about 30 minutes. I might've whittled it down a little bit, but really it's, it really goes into the 80, 20 reality of when we play matches and the 80, the 80% 80 of the matches we play are spent between points, right? Only 20% of the, uh, of, of the matches actually playing the points. So if you don't manage, and I didn't do this for a long time, did not manage that, that 80%, the between points and on the side changes very well, man, you just have, you just are kind of scattered all over in terms of your thinking. And so that when it's time to play the 20% play the points, you're not as well organized as you could be. And so I've got a video for you that will show you my four parts between points routine that is really a difference maker for me. And I know for a lot of other players as well, it is a free video. It is private. And so the way to get it uh, is just to go over to webtennis.com and uh, you'll get free access to it. Let's wait on that until we're done uh, with today's with today's What's the Right Shot episode. And uh, let me go through my notes one more time here to make sure that I'm not missing any, anything. So, um, all right, good. So, look, um, I'm going to bring a video up here for you. Let me get out of this and... Um, Go find the first video that I want to show you. And that is going to be, it's going to be this one right here. And let's do this. Let me get it more in here so it's bigger. And then uh, I got to go find it. <laughs> okay, here it is. All right. So, um, serve and stay back. Um, is not literally serve and stay back, meaning serve and stay back here behind the baseline. If you want to be thinking, if your mindset tactically, strategically, is to try to take time away from that from that returner. And, and typically for me, if I'm thinking about serve and stay back, it's actually going to be serve and stay in, inside the baseline, looking for something that I can take early. Uh, whether I slice as a right hand slice out wide or whether, um, you know, the ad court, I'll show you an ad court serve as well, where I'm just trying to bounce it and kind of get it out here. All I'm really trying to do is to move my opponent in, in, in the do side over to this alley and over to the ad side over to this alley. And when I do that, what I'm hoping is that they decide to hit the ball hard. Right. That they give me time or that they take their own time away, but they 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 sort of help me in that in that effort to be able to uh, take their time away. So, look, um, and we're going to get into this serve in just a second here in terms of the three swing tech cues. But what I'm thinking here is I want to go out wide. I want to move that player. I want to move that player <laughs> actually past the alley. Right. So I'm already. I'm already inside here in terms of, you know, could I be a little bit closer to the middle? Sure, I could. And maybe the invite with this is, look, if you can go up the line from out there 
and thread the needle. Okay, I can't cover 100% of the court. I can cover a lot of it, though, especially with this player out here and me sort of cutting down the angles, right? Can they roll it over here cross court? Yeah, I think they can, but I just kind of feel like I'm in a position to be able to at least get the racket on it and just sort of shove it up in this part of the court and uh, and make them run. So, look, in this case here, what I've done is, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, with this serve, my intention with the serve was, yeah, was to try to move them into the alley, but I didn't think I'd get this kind of unintentional out wide. And once I'm here and I recognize that, I'm going, well, maybe I should really start to move in, right? It's not serve and volley, right? This is not serve and volley. This is serve and stay in, and let's see what we can do to take time away. And right now, again, if they want to thread the needle up the line, go for it. I, you know, maybe once in a while it's going to happen in a match, but I don't think so on a regular on a regular basis. And so, look, I'm just looking to whatever they have, I mean, whatever they bring to me, where am I? I mean, I'm in the classic halfway between the baseline and the service line. A lot of players will say, well, you shouldn't be there. That's no man's land. But, you know, the reality is all I have to do if I play a transitional volley from here, right, the ball doesn't bounce. I mean, look at how much court I've got to be able to just kind of shove it into and then be able to move forward. Well, in this case, the return lands a little bit. Short. I mean, it's really kind of on the service line here. I've got no reason. I don't need to go ahead and play serve and volley or serve and stay in and then awkwardly, awkwardly kind of reach down for this thing and try to play a tricky volley from there. So I know I really moved that opponent out wide. I've got a little time here to be able to let it get up and then just play it into the open court. And now the whole mindset is, all right, I'm coming in. Let's see. Let's see you pass me. Right. So so that's a couple of mindsets right there. Right. And it ends up not being able to get to it ends up being a winner. But that's certainly not the mindset. So the mindset, again, is let's go ahead and let's get it out wide. Let's move the opponent into, if not outside of that of that alley and end up end up inside the baseline. Right. So that's mindset number one. Then the next thing is, uh oh, man, well, not uh oh, good. I've actually played a wider serve than I than I intended. Let's really now move in and take time away. And then this shot right here is a two shot mindset. Not thinking winner. I don't want to put the pressure on myself. I just now I'm thinking, what's the spot above the top of the net? I want this ball to travel over. And now I'm thinking, let's go ahead and see if you can pass me. And you know. Ends up bouncing twice, so that's a winner. Um, so look, let's do this. Any questions? Go ahead and start putting them into the uh, into the uh, chat box there. And now, what I want to do is I want to go back to <laughs> I want to go back to Streamyard here if I can find it. Hold on for one second. And uh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to get this out of here. And um, I want to bring up another another video here that we're going to take a look at. This one's going to be uh, to the ad court, and it's going to be the exact same. It's going to be the exact same mindset. Um, okay, good. If I can find that right here. Outstanding. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go along with the same mindset here, which is which is going to be I want to get – I want to I want to try to move that opponent into the alley. I want to open up the court by doing that, and yet at the same time, I don't want to have to think. Well, I got to hedge my bet just in case that one out of thirty-eight times the guy dings a winner from being out there. So I'm going to end up here, right? I'm going to end up serve and stay in. This is my version of serve and stay back. This is not a serve and volley, right? And look. From right here, same kind of thing. I've got them stretched out. And maybe it's tough to see because um, in, in the video. But you can see that he's stretched out. So my thought now, again, is let's keep moving forward and see how much more time we can take away. And this one ends up not being returned at all. 
but you get the idea that that all that we're trying to do here is we're just trying to move that opponent from inside this single sideline and we're just trying to get them we're just trying to get them outside into the alley and and then from there you, you know right here you're actually sort of you're kind of analyzing well how far in the alley is it or how, how much have i got them stretched out i mean and this thing really works from time to time like if you've if you've served enough down the t or maybe to the body if you've done that enough then that's part of what they're looking for, right? So I'm not saying that this serve got way out wide, but it could be, and this is in this match, I remember this is sort of like at the end of the end of the match, I'd served enough down the tee, I'd served enough to the body where the opponent has got to honor that, has got to um, really be able to honor it. And then you go ahead and you play the thing out wide. And now here it is, serve and stay in, serve and stay in, analyze how great a sort of have heavy hit or maybe not even if even if you haven't moved them out that wide from here at least you've got them started moving towards the alley and i just love it when they give me pace you know from here i just i have the ball i have the ball right now and then and then there you go so um i hope that makes sense let's do this um, you got any questions on this, on serve, on my definition of serve and stay in? Let me know before we get into, um, before we get into the three cues of the serve. I want to help, I want to help y y you with these three cues, kind of get a little bit more natural power, a little bit more natural high quality spin, and uh, be able to sort of pick out those three targets um, to the T, to the body, um, and then and then out wide. Um, let's do this, uh, Lynn. Yes, I. Uh, no, in fact, let's go with that. Late to the party seems like a version of first strike tennis. You know, here's here's my my thing with first strike tennis. To me, I think the misconception is first strike tennis is you serve it somewhere and whatever comes back you go ahead and unload big time. And for me, it's first strike tennis is less about the quality of the hit, less about power. It's more about taking time away. And, and I think that, that if you, if you think about first strike tennis and you serve and literally stay back behind the baseline, Let's say you serve out wide, but you stay back behind the baseline. Well, now you give that returner a little bit of relief in terms of being able to get back, um, to get back, at least starting to, to move back towards the middle. And what happens then, right? Well, now you feel pressure because you're thinking first strike. Well, whatever they, they throw back at me, I got to go big, right? I just, I don't, I don't like that, that kind of mindset on it. What I would rather see you do in terms of first strike is think about how much time can you take away? And again, whether you take the, you know, if, if you take them out wide and they really ding it hard back to you and you're about three to four feet inside the baseline and you play a volley from there, what, what do you care? It doesn't matter because you now have the ball. They're still stuck out wide and you get to move in and just shove it to the open court. And like I said, then the mindset is, dude, Let's see if you can pass me. Can they pass you from there? Yes, once in a great while they will, but for most of the time they won't, and that's okay. So you got to look at the big picture in terms of if they pass you once, does this mean this strategy or this tactic doesn't work? No, it means that you're just being real once in a while. Um, this is not going to work for, for whatever reason. Either you're not going to make the transitional shot or, you know, maybe – they go over there and they intend to go uh, cross court. They're here late. They go up the line for a winner. Who knows? Um, so that's kind of my definition of first strike tennis. And the word strike to me, I think, um, can really be misconceived. It just, to me, it's like, well, we got to take whatever comes back and just thunder the thing over there somewhere. And look, I'm not saying that if you get a short return that you couldn't get, that you shouldn't get on top of it. And, you know, if you got to play heavy, you know, to the open court, that's fine. But there are lots of returns, even if you've moved them 
out of or you've moved them out towards the alley and your thought is first strike tennis the ball the geomet i mean the geometry left for you with that return intended or not isn't always great so i uh, hope that makes sense um okay so be your best academy do you vary spot angle uh on baseline when serving a little bit i do I do a little bit. I mean, I don't always serve right next to the uh, to the center hash mark, and yet I don't always go out towards a single sideline. I, I don't like to get that far out there. Um, but I mean, cer certainly it doubles, but in singles, in singles, no. So when I say I vary a little bit, yeah, I mean, from the center hash mark, I might go as far out as maybe four feet, something like that. Um, but it's 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 not that much. Right. And part of that is, well, I'm not, I'm not sure what part of it is. I just feel like from the same position, the same relative position where I'm serving from, I can disguise whether I'm going T, whether I'm going body or whether I'm going out wide. And really the difference there, like from the, from the deuce side, when you're serving um, into the deuce court, for me, when I toss, okay, let me see if I can bring that up. Um, I want to get, that's actually just a great question. I, I appreciate that. Um, there we go. Because I think this might, this might um, answer the question better for you. So for example, when I am serving from the deuce side uh, and here we go. So what did I say? Um, I said, I'm maybe, what is that? Three feet? I don't know. A little, a little, a little distorted. But when I toss, and I, and I'm always pretty much tossing in the same spot um, because I want to be able to disguise from here. Could I take this to the T? Could I go here to the body, or could I go out wide? And the answer is. That's that's my goal. I want to disguise so that returner doesn't know from this toss and my setup. And the only difference, so when I go to the T, I actually open my shoulders later than when I go out wide and open the shoulders a nanosecond earlier, right? And the reason for that is just so I can come around the right side of the ball and impart impart the string bed there right so i hope that i hope that makes sense um in terms of in terms of your question there varying uh varying the uh, certain position uh are you concerned about a novak like return deep down the middle um i'm not because i i would love it to come deep down the middle and I'll tell you, if it's gonna, if their return would land a couple of inches or maybe two feet inside the baseline, I'm not gonna back up. I mean, if I mean, if you look at this position I'm in right now, where I'm, I don't know, what is that, a couple of feet inside the baseline? I want them to do that. I want them to thunder it deep. And if it's in the middle, my gosh, I don't, I don't have to move anything other than just kind of get the racket face behind the path of that incoming ball and volley it to the open court. Why can't we volley it from here? I mean, is there some rule in the game that says, oh man, you've got to back up and you got to let it bounce and you got to give up court position and you got to play a tricky shot. No, you don't. You don't. You can volley from here. You can half volley from here. You can, as I did in this point, you can let the ball sit up a little bit and then play, you know, it was off to my left. So you can play a backhand underspin slice approach. All we're thinking about is how do we take their time away, and um, and so again, I don't I don't care where I play the transitional shot from, as long as I'm not back behind uh, the baseline. So hope that makes sense. At least a good good question. All right, so let's do this. Um, I want to go through, and, and you know, if you've got some more questions, great. Um, okay, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn says, yes, I get it. I have that mindset, but my coach always yells at me for being in no man's land. Okay, well, that's kind of the common thinking out there is that you should never be in no man's land. Primarily because 
uh, it's we just never work on playing shots from this part of the court, right? So, so if you were to take the next 30 days and every day you'd go out in the court and you'd have someone feed you balls where you're playing transitional shots from no man's land, you would desensitize yourself to it. You would start robbing that opponent of their time to be able to recover, to get back in the court. And you would start getting some unforced errors from that returner because they're now going, well, wait a minute. They've taken, you know, they've, they've just taken me out wide. They're in no man's land. They're looking for me to do, you know, give them some pace. Um, And then they start going and trying to hit the ball even bigger, right? They try to get the ball by you. The angles are so poor for them to do that. What do they do? They start making unforced errors. So take the next 30 days, Lynn, and, uh, or is it, is it Lynn? Yeah. Um, And just have someone feed you some balls inside where you're standing inside no man's land. Whether you have volley, whether you volley it, whether you let it bounce up because it's a little bit too far in front of you, go for it. Go for it. All right. Um, Paul is asking, uh, hey, Paul, do you vary velocity of server basically the same speed for first and second? Um, the only difference between my first and second serves uh, is just is just trajectory, right? So in terms of swing speed, um, I probably swing a little faster on my second serve because I want to create more of a little bit more of an arc right? The toss is primarily in the same spot. I mean, yes, the the swing path is probably going up a little bit more directly to get that different arc, but I I can't tell you for sure. I can't prove it, but I'll I'll bet you if we could measure my swing speed, that my swing speed on my second serve is faster than it is on my first serve, just because my first serve has got, you know, a slight trajectory and the second serve has got a little bit more. So second serve, right. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get the ball a little higher over the net. So safety clearance, but that spin that we create with a faster swing speed is now helping curve it back down. Um, All right, let me go into uh, this next part and guys keep, keep loading up the, uh, keep loading up the comments and uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, uh huh. Okay. So let's go to the three cues um, on this serve here. And uh, I call these swing technique cues. Um, there's one thing I want to sort of show you before, um, before we start with the swing, and that is the target. I mean, so we know that, and this is the same point you've seen, we know this serve is going out wide. And rather than me, looking through the net, looking through the obstacle that we want to avoid and seeing my, let's say that it's a spot right there. I think you can see the arrow. Let's say that I want to go out wide and that, that that's the spot. Well, to me, that's a little bit of an optical illusion in terms of trying to look through the obstacle you're trying to avoid. So what I do is I go, well, if I'm going, if I'm going, for example, if I want to go to the T, I'm now looking at the center strap and and thinking that if I play my serve over the top of the center strap, that's going to equate to the T. So my target is a spot, not in the court over there, but is a little window above is above the center strap, right? Where it where where it's holding down the net to three feet. And and my trust is that hey, if I get it over, let's call it a foot, maybe, maybe it's 18 inches, whatever. I don't know exactly, but if you get it to go through that window above the top of the net, it's going to go to your target. If I want to serve to the body. Okay. Well, I'm going to find, I'm looking out there right now. If I'm thinking I'm a serve of the body, I'm looking at the net and I'm looking at the spot of the net that, that if I go over that spot, it equates to landing in the service box that goes at that returner's body. I don't know what that spot is. I mean, from right here, maybe it's a crease in the in the tape. Maybe it's a dark spot. It could be something. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look up when I come into when I come into the surf here. I, I've already told myself I'm going out wide, and now I'm looking up, and I'm not thinking here. I'm thinking, what's the spot over the top of the net? 
What's that little window above the top of the net that equates to going out wide? So that's that's not really a swing cue. That's that's um, more of a mindset in terms of what's 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 a tangible target rather than looking through the obstacle that I want to avoid. Okay, so um, look, first thing is we got to get the toss out in front, and if the toss is too far. Um, above your head, or this is really, I guess, in the face of a clock, maybe around, yeah, let's let's call it one o'clock. I mean, if you were to do it here at here at 12 o'clock, um, and it's even though it's out in front, that might make it a little bit tougher to be able to go to the T, might make it a little bit tougher to go here. Um, maybe easier to go out wide. I'm not sure, but I think that might start to telegraph to that, to that opponent where you're serving. So what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the toss is in front. And the reason I want the toss in front of me, if we had the camera at the side angle looking into me along the baseline, what you would see is that if I allowed the toss to drop, it would drop inside the baseline. Right. And it's kind of like when we throw something, when we throw a ball, we don't release it over the top of our head. We don't release it kind of to the side of our head. When we throw a ball, we really are releasing it, the wrist, it, all that action's happening in front of us. And so I want to feel the same thing, that the toss is out in front. And that's where you get an opportunity to generate a little bit more natural swing speed, which is what we're working on here, right? We're trying to really kind of create some more natural swing speed, which 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 equates to power. But the other thing you're going to get out of that is a much higher quality spin from being able to generate that swing speed. So the other thing, too, with the toss in front is it it brings you into the court more naturally. Right. So your momentum without jackknifing, but your momentum on balance pulls you into the court, which is what we're talking about. The whole theme today is serve and stay in, not serve and stay back. Okay, so that's cue number one. Make sure that toss is out in front. Now, look, the second one is with the tossing motion. And you've got to make sure with this tossing motion that you that you finish you finish the tossing motion, right? Tossing motions with your is with if you're right handed, obviously with your left with your left arm. And too often what I see right about here is players get the upper arm here, the elbow breaks, right? It kind of bends, and you might get the toss in the perfect spot, but you never, ever get yourself into the proper swing position where you have that front shoulder up, right? And, and so it's really important that you finish the tossing motion. And what I like to feel here is that there's tempo, right? T-E-M-P-O in the arm going up, which is kind of a constant speed, right? Tempo, it comes up at one speed, the ball comes out at, I mean, the arm, well, let me back up. The ball comes out a little bit above head high, but that doesn't mean that the arm speed, that the, that the tempo stops. The tempo continues to go up until you finally get to where indoors you're pointing up at the ceiling or outdoors you're pointing up at the sky because you want to drop, you want to naturally have this back shoulder slightly below the left shoulder. And the pros we see, it's just super exaggerated, right? So that's cue number two, is to make sure that your tossing motion gets finished to put you into the proper swing setup position. And then this is really key now. You've done two things really well, right? Number one, you got the toss in front, which is a more natural release for your wrist as if you were throwing something. Number two, you finished you sw- you finished the tossing motion. So you're really now set up to take and swing, not from your hand. You're not going to reach up with your hand. You're actually going to initiate the swing from your racket shoulder. You want this racket shoulder to be the thing that starts up, up at the ball, rather than just kind of being here and letting your shoulders kind of rotate forward to where you just are reaching with a hand. No, man, you want that shoulder to go up, and it's and and that's when you really generate the power that you're looking for 
And again, whether you're going out wide or whether you're going to the body or whether you're going T, you still want that shoulder to initiate the swing. And, and those are the three swing tech cues. The other thing I, um, the other thing I love to do right here, when I, when, when I come up and I get ready right here, I really do two things. Number one, I, I'm picking out, I'm picking out my target, that spot above the top of the net that equates to, am I going to, am I going body or am I going out wide? But the other reminder I give myself is how relaxed am I um, on the grip, right? Is it super, is, is it super relaxed? If it's not, if I've got any kind of grip tension at all, I'm just completely making sure that my fingers are just are just really relaxed. Because if you get too grippy, you get too strong with that grip pressure, with that grip tension, it just slows down the swing. You you rob yourself of natural power and you rob yourself of a high quality of a high quality spin. So um, those are the three serve swing tech cues and specifically for uh, this out serve. Why? Let's see what we got here in the comments area. Hey, Rich, great to see you. As always, Lefty, I love the window over the net. Uh, your suggestion a few years back helped change my serve for the better. You darn lefties. Well, good to hear that. Um, hey, Joe, did you always pick spots on top of the net for your serves, or did you develop this, uh, this technique? Where I really got this technique was uh, from the late and great Dennis Ralston. And... Uh, you know, if you're if you're old enough um, to remember the name Dennis Ralston, uh, you know he got the Wimbledon finals one year in singles. He won, I think it was four or five Grand Slam doubles titles. One of America's great players of all time. But I got a chance to work with him once in Austin, Texas. This must have been seven or eight years ago, and uh, we were working actually on serve and volley. And I was I was serving from the do side. I came in and I played my first volley technique was he said the technique was perfect but it ended up hitting the tape and he asked me well so what was your target and i said well it was that spot you know it's that spot over there in the net and he says no all you got to do is just think about a spot above the top of the net and if you'll do that you take the you take the baseline out of your thinking so you're not worried about having to just feather the thing over the top of the net you're not worried about keeping the the volley inside uh the baseline and so he just said, look, what's a spot above the top of the net that if you were to have the ball pass over that spot, that shoot, you'd, um, you'd end up hitting that target anyway. And the light bulb went off for me and just like, boom. And, and so I've really just thought about that so much, you know, especially on serve. I, I'm always working on it in terms of return to serve. Like for some reason, my ground strokes, uh, my volleys, really on my overheads as well. I'm, I, you know, I've gotten much better at not pulling down the overhead and just thinking about well, what's a window over the top of the net I want this to go. And the whole, the whole trust there is if I get the ball through that window, it's not going deep. So you end up kind of taking the baseline out of it. But the one area that I, that I really working on right now a lot is return to serve, and especially in doubles where. I'm just thinking, hey, well, you know what? If I take this return and it goes across or it goes over the the net strap, a foot or so over the net strap, I don't have to worry about that server's partner up there at net, even if they even if they want to poach. So um, I did not come up with this on my own. It's something I got from Dennis Rawlson back in the day, and it's something that he told me he got from Pancho Gonzalez. So it just it just keeps working its way down, and it's one of those. It's one of those time-tested things that, you know, just work. It works at, at, it works at every level. It works at every skill level. Um, it works on hard court. It works on clay. It works on grass. It works on any surface. So, and I would say for me a lot on, I, I think on this point especially, um, I remember this point. It was match point of the indoors. And um, on this shot right here, where um, I've got this backhand approach. All I'm thinking about now is I'm, I'm just thinking about, all right, I want to create some spacing with my feet. I don't want the ball to crowd me because I want to come in behind it. And I actually keep it a little, probably a hair too far away from me because I do end up 
kind of taken one step to my left right there, which in an ideal world, um, I would have been able to just, just kind of get a little closer to it and just be able to use the feet to move the racket um, cross court. But my thought here is that what's the spot over the top of the net I want this ball to travel? That's all I'm thinking. I, I, I assume the guy's going to get there, right? He's got wheels. He's good. I assume he's going to get there, and that's okay. And like I said before, is I'm just going to – now mindset is let me see you pass me. Let's see if you can pass me, and if you can, find a dandy. And there it is. It bounces twice. And so, but again, what's the spot over the top of the net that you want this ball to travel? And if you think about it and that's all your thought, then all the other stroke cues, technique, mechanics, fundamentals, they all just take care of themselves because you practice this stuff a gazillion times. So um, hope that helps. Guys, what else? Anything else on your mind uh, from today? And um, I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer with you. Um, and I would tell you, look, if, again, if you're brand new to web tennis and, and to me, I do have a free course, a uh, free video course for you. Again, I think it's 30 minutes, but I might have whittled it down to more like about 20 minutes. But it really talks to you about the 80-20 reality, which is 80% of the points we play happens between points and on side changes. and if you manage that time of your match, the 80% really well, you tend to play better uh, in the 20% um, of the match, which, which are the points. And, and play better, what I mean is that you have a more narrow skill level range where you're not playing great one, one or two points in a row, and then you play just like not great. And so you have this kind of wide skill level range from point to point. When you manage that 80% really well, it's a four parts between points routine that has really helped me, you know, what happens is you start to eliminate that not so great stuff and you play within a much more narrow, um, a much more narrow uh, skill level range up at the top. So if you've not gotten that video, I highly suggest you go get it. It's over at webtennis.com. Uh, varying T in the body. Joe is asking uh, wide serve. Does your left foot toe position change the angles to the baseline? Well, my does it because, I mean, if I'm playing someone who's really observant and who was the – oh, it was Andre. It was Agassi who was saying something about uh, Becker and that Becker was uh, – every time he'd stick his tongue out, that meant he was serving to this one spot. And and Andre just would look for that and he would see this, the tongue get stuck out. He'd know, okay, well, it's going wherever that was. I don't know, to your body or whatever, out wide. So – for me, it's no. I, I try to keep the same setup. I want the same tossing tempo and look. I want the same toss placement because if it's out in front, I feel like I can go T, I can go body, I can go out wide um, uh, just by when I open up my shoulders. And it's just it's just a nanosecond in terms of opening up the shoulders, depending on the direction that you want to go. So I don't change my feet. Joe, if we play, you start and you start changing your feet. I'm going to go to school on you. And eventually I'm going to know where you're serving because of your place, place, uh, foot placement. So uh, I don't do that. Um, okay. So the next one is, can you come in and return to serve where the returner hits it hard? And I have stepped in and I, and I sp splat the return backhand. Like my racket was obviously not behind the ball or my grip is too weak. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think what you're saying is when you are the serve, the server and you step in and the guys just crush the return, what I try to feel like is I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to really quickly get the, the string bed behind where I think contact's going to be. Cause the thing I don't want to do is have to have timing with a take back of the racket, you know, the racket back or whatever, trying to prep it behind me or to my side where I've got, then I've got to bring it in. And even if you time it right, it's like there's so much power. You've got all this power coming in and now you're bringing in more. I just try to present a flat racket face string bed to, to, to the contact point 
and let let the ball get absorbed, let it kind of compress against the string bed and just kind of redirect it. I don't try to fight it. Don't try to get rid of it. It's going to go out there on, on its own anyway. When a, when a ball compresses on your string bed, it does it for a second, and then it just rebounds back on its own. So you don't really have to give it much. Um, but I love that situation. I've got a guy out wide. He crushes it at me, usually the forehand from the deuce court. I just love that situation because I don't have to have much racket work. There's not much technique I've got to bring. And all I got to do is just, just quickly get the racket behind the eventual point of contact and, uh, and, and just redirect it. Right. Um, okay. Um, absolutely. So Paul, you had good question. Do you ever serve a change up off your fastball first serve? Well, let's be honest at my age, I don't really have a fastball. Um, what I do have is control of those three directions, T and body and out wide from the same toss placement. And so sometimes my fastball is, it's a decently paced first serve, but it, they're guessing one way and, 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 and maybe they just have guessed wrong and they, they're kind of surprised by the direction and maybe that looks like a fastball to them. Um, but to answer your question, absolutely. I throw a lot of second serves in first, especially to the ad court where I want to bounce it out wide. I want to worst case, I want to move them out of, um, out of the singles sideline or over the single sideline into the alley and then, and then get the ball up on them, right? And lots of times players, when they get out there wide, they don't really sort of think through it enough in terms of if, if I'm out there wide, I'm going to actually play a shot that doesn't have a ton of pace if, if the server's staying back or, or, or staying in because I want to buy a little bit of time, even if it's just one step, to get back into the middle of the court. And But a lot of players end up getting out there, especially on that – that second serve is a first. It's sitting up there pretty for them. And they go boom. And the next thing you know is it's not a winner. I've got it. I'm stepping inside. So uh, absolutely, um, Paul, that's a great uh, question. And be your best, um, especially to the same target. Yeah, you know, more I would say on, on if I'm going to go second serve first to, uh, if I'm going to go second serve first to the deuce court, I'm probably not going out wide um, just because I don't want it sitting out there. And I don't hit that many second serves out wide to the, to the deuce court just because I don't feel like I've got a lot of margin of safety there. I'm going to go more towards the middle or more towards the tee. And so, for example, if I'm serving from the deuce court and I'm going to throw a second serve in, even if it's a first serve um, or as a first serve, I'm going to go more towards – that kind of half of uh, of the T and and the body. And what I'm hoping that that returner will do is that they will choose, if it's right-handed player, to the do side, that they will step towards the alley, right? I mean, I've been working on this a lot lately, whether it's a first or second serve. If they're in the do side or if they're in the ad side, I'm trying to serve to that inside pocket, right? To their inside pocket, which forces them forces them to move towards the alley to get out of the way. So, you know, to the body serves, what I don't want to do is kind of have it leak a little bit towards the single sideline to where now they're going to play it and, 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 and be able to move naturally towards the middle of the court, if that makes sense. So, um, all right. So Joe, can you briefly repeat your third swing tech cue? All right. Yeah, we can do that. Um, that's really with thinking about your racket shoulder um, being the thing that initiates the upward swing, right? Soft hands, relaxed, and wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Yikes. So here we go. So you've got your toss in front, right? You got your toss out in front. You finish the tossing motion so that now, now from right here, rather than thinking about your hand, reaching up for the ball, I think about the shoulder. This is all relaxed in here. The hand grip is super relaxed. If it was strong, you probably could not do this. 
But I just think about that racket shoulder as being the thing that I'm going to initiate the upward part of the swing. And that helps drop the racket down, right? So from here, if you're thinking too much about reaching up with a hand, maybe you don't get the same racket drop behind you where, what is this? I mean, when you swing behind your back, this is just racket speed development, right? Um, two things can kill that. Number one is too tight of a grip. And number two would be just thinking I'm going to reach up with a hand. Again, if you look at the shoulder, this is the body part that I'm focusing on to reach up first and then let the whip kind of go up from there. Does that make does that make sense, Joe? Let me know if, let me know if I answer that question there for you. Um, so guys, what else is on your mind? If anything, here we are, 1249 in the afternoon Pacific time zone. Beautiful day out here in the California desert. We're going to get up high 80s, maybe even touch 90 today. Uh, like I said earlier, I was on the grass courts this morning here. They just opened yesterday. Uh, they shut them down every October for scalping and reseeding and all that good stuff. They're just in beautiful condition. You know, the grass courts here in the desert are on a sand base. They're not, they don't get that soggy, kind of lousy, spongy stuff that I'm not saying all the grass courts in the East Coast do that, but um, it's just really firm and it's just, there's just not a bad bounce. So, um, okay, RSH, you're welcome. Thanks for, thanks for being with me today, guys. I'm going to hang out here a little bit longer, maybe another minute or two. If you've got a question, um, go ahead and let me know. I love doing this stuff. And look, um, two things. Maybe in the comments area, you could give me a topic that you want to work on the next time we do this. Um, uh, this kind of what's the right shot live version. If there's a, a topic, maybe there's uh, uh, some stroke, some swing tech you want to work on. Uh, maybe there's a, <coughs> a shot choice situation or a tactical situation. Or just shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. Uh, and let me know guys. Um, all right. I think we've, uh, I think we've done it. Great. And again, if you've not picked up my free video course on the 80, 20 reality, how should we be spending those 25 seconds between points? And, uh, what is it? 90 seconds, the side change. I highly recommend you pick up this video. It's free. Just go on over to webtennis.com and, uh, you can get it. And um, and it's going to be a big help for you. It's my four parts between points routine that has really helped me in the last, really helped me. I mean, this year, ridiculous. Um, it's helped me a lot. So, all right, guys, hope this has helped. Um, as always, uh, thank you, Joe. As always, we got to get out there today. We got to help someone else have a great day. Gang, see you, see you, see you guys again 